can't do his will. With the heavy baggage of sin and guilt and cares and fears just overload us. We, even Christians today, need God. We need God. Amen. David needed him. We need him. The last verse, and this is where I want to get to, was just get down to verse 8, and he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yeah. This is David's invitation. Now, David, and, and, and I'm, I'm, that one word right there, taste, has had my attention for several years now. And I've preached some sermons off of it. I even preached at Jay High School one time about, about that one word, that taste. Because of using that word there really intrigues me. It really does taste. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of things you could use right there that would work in that place. Or like try God and see. Or test God and see. Or, or you know, uh, call God and see. There's so many things. But he says, oh, taste. And that's that invitation. I mean, you know how... Yeah, I, I've heard trust of several times. I tasted that soup up there, that second one, and you, you didn't get some of that. You understand? That's your invitation. Just to what David is saying. David is saying, man, the Lord is, he's, he's delivered me and, and, and saved me and done all these things for me. I'm so happy. I'm so, I'm so full of praise right now. You need to go get some of that. That's what we do. It's exactly what we do. Anytime we taste something that, that gets our attention, the next thing we want to do is somebody, we want somebody else to taste it. And this is David's invitation. David goes through all this and it gets his attention so much that he didn't want to keep it. You understand? It wasn't good enough to keep. It was so good that it had to go and it had to bless other people. It just didn't do it justice of David just keeping it. That's why we have a story. That's why we have Paul's stories, Matthew's stories, Timothy's stories. All these stories is because God blessed these people and delivered them. And once they were so full of praise, you know, they didn't want to keep it. They wanted somebody else to just taste it. In other words, all you got to do is get a little taste. The rest to take care of itself. That's how much they believed in God. If you would just taste it. Taste. I mean, God was so good. You know, like when you get one of my, my wife is real big into taste. Now, I'm an eater that genuinely just likes to go eat and get it done because I need to eat to live. You know, get it done and get on. But every now and then you'll taste something. Man, you want to keep it in your mouth and put it under your tongue like a sweet morsel. and just What you're trying to do is you're trying to linger on and hold that taste. That's how good God is. Once you taste Him, really taste God, you don't want it to go away. Now, it's not going to go away unless you go. But the thing about it is, that's what we do with the taste. Is we keep trying to get that taste to stay in our mouth. Now, you take the word taste. One thing about it is, Everybody's just different. You understand that? That's so weird to me. That I can I can love this banana pudding and then I can take it over here to Miss 14 and she it wasn't just right. But then all of a sudden we can have a universal taste. Where all of us can like the same thing. There ought to be nobody that don't like hamburger. If you were born and not like hamburger, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, just, I'm just sorry. You're not in the group. And that's what God is. God's is that universal taste for us. He can please anybody. Amen. With, with anything, any kind of appetite. You may be a vegetarian, and that hamburger still going to be good enough for you. You understand? Not only is he different in taste, because everybody has a different taste. But he's also the universal. So he fits us. You get me? He fits us uniquely. But also all at once. 
Only God can have that kind of taste. Yeah. I know Brother Martin's banana pudding is pretty good. But it just ain't that good. I remember preaching, what I preached about at Jay First Baptist, or Jay High School was Billy Sutler's barbecue. That was right when he came out with that barbecue, and man, that barbecue had just changed my world. I have a candy now that I'm obsessed with, and I don't know why. I got it out of, out of one of these parades. They throw this piece of candy right here. And I look for that thing literally at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, you name it, Dollar Store, Fred's, everywhere. If you, if you can think of it, I've been there and tried to find this piece of candy. And man, it was getting so discouraged. It really was. I just wanted to find this piece of candy. So I went up to the Christmas parade. The, 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 this came from uh, a parade before that. I don't know what it was. But... That big box on the bag. No, it's a big bowl. It's oh, not big box. box. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that simple. <laughs> Trust me. I've been through the internet on this too. Now. World Wide Web. <laughs> but anyway. I mean, I really saw out because I really enjoyed it. What we did is, is I picked out all the ones the kids had in their candy bowl. And I ate every one of them. And by the time I'd done that, that tasted, it got me. And I don't even like sweets. I don't eat sweets. I really don't. I don't eat candy. This, I love. I love. Kids still find places and bring them to me now. So I went up to the next parade, and somebody hit me with one of them. And I chased that truck down in the prayer. Hey, man! What are you doing? It stopped. It was, it, was, it was the key guy right down the road here, Worship Day Hospital. And I said, man, where did y'all get this candy? He said, there's a candy store downtown Pensacola. Pensacola candy. Go in there. It's dirt cheap, penny and piece. So I sent my wife down there to get like five bags at a time. It's, it's amazing. It's only like, there's 200, it's two dollars per pack. And it's just unbelievable that I can get so much heaven for so little price. Let me understand. Let me just... Everybody, you say, what? Well, they preacher, he's crazy. But you've had something like that, too. There's been something that's got you that you said, man, I'm going to find that. I'm going to get that. that. It's from Brazil. Brother, give us all a piece now. I think you had to find it for I got three more right now. <laughs> Listen, we've all had something. Right now, I'm just gonna slide over here just because this just hit me. Oh, Wade's looking for an old truck, mm -hmm. seventy-six model, seventy-five. 75. Now he's went all the way to Lake City just to find an old truck. Right now, that's that's what Wade wants. His desires for that. And if a truck or candy can do this. Shouldn't we be like this for God? Because I'm going to tell you tonight, He tastes so much better than the things of this world. Right. Shouldn't we have that much energy to put in the little things of serving God? Amen. You know, we moan and groan about Bible school and, 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 you know, just doing these extra things at church. When we get outside of, of, of just regular church and start having extra things, we start growing. What I'm saying is, he tastes good enough for us to put him in and shut up on the rest. Amen. Not do the complaining. We have a God that tastes so good that he's better than the problems that come with getting, getting to him. <clears throat> I want to know tonight, do you enjoy taste of God. Amen. Because I remember, now listen to me real briefly. I'm going to get to the, to the end of this. I remember when I first tasted the Lord. I mean really, I've been in church, you have to, you could come to church for 10 years and never taste God. And one day, you knock on your heart. I remember at kneeling down on a cot, really getting my first taste of Jesus Christ. The first time in my whole entire life in that rehab, I said, I will go anywhere you want me to. That surrender to Christ was my first real taste. And I will remember it forever. 
But I'll tell you what happens sometimes. Sometimes we get distracted or on a different diet or, or different things. And we kind of forget what it tastes like. You, you understand? And every now and then, you know, we kind of think back what it tastes like. I don't want you to think back. It's just like anything else. You can go a long time from eating an apple pie, but man, once you do, you think, man, why don't I eat these all the time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diet, I'm not asking you to think back. I'm asking you to remember. But Scott, you need to stand up, stand up. You won't bother me a bit. I know your back's hurt. Tonight, I'm, I'm, I want you to do this. I want you to remember that first taste. First time when he said, You're forgiven. How sweet was that? That first time your heart told you you were going to heaven. <coughs> sweet. It was nice. Those same things that God told you then still remain tonight. And if we can get that taste back, first takes, then we can start inviting others to taste the same taste. We can't go out and honestly seek out the lost if we don't remember what we're talking about.